Hallelujah, hallelujah. One more time, it's your brother in Christ, John O'Quiri. I thank God for this opportunity to share with you the word of God. The word of God is the bread that comes down from heaven that it may satisfy us of our hunger and give us energy to continue with our walk in Christ Jesus. And I want to share with you the word of God from the book of Romans, chapter number 12, verses 1. I'm going to read from the New King James Version. The Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. My message today is, in the view of the mercies of God, let us offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. Paul was writing to the Roman church, which comprised of a bigger percentage of the Gentiles, people who were not Jews, people who were not born of the seed of Abraham, but people whom God had chosen to demonstrate his mercy to, so that he may make them or he may adopt them into the family and the lineage of Abraham. So Paul is showing them the mercy. And the word mercy is equivalent to the word pity or compassion. The word mercy means to feel what someone is undergoing and not only to feel it or to be touched by the feeling of what he is undergoing through, but to be able to express that feeling, to be able to express that you have been touched and to be able to get to a point that you want because of the feeling that you have been touched to be able to deliver him out of his hardship out of his trouble you want to be a partaker you want to go through with him what he is undergoing and God has demonstrated his mercy God felt pity towards human being he had compassion towards us and his compassion did not remain at the feeling at the point of just a mere feeling at the point of just a mere emotion God expressed his mercy he expressed his compassion and he did not manifest it through a facial expression but God went ahead and expressed his mercy not only by word but also by action and Paul is saying because God has manifested his mercy by word and by action let us therefore now offer our bodies or present our bodies as a living sacrifice to present the body means this to bring your body under God's disposal, to hand over your body, to surrender your body, to yield your body, to yield it to be something that God can use it the way that he wants, to bring your body under the will of God. When the sacrifice has been taken into the temple and it has been placed upon the altar, the offerer no longer has got power over it. The offerer no longer has got a say over it. The offerer can no longer take it back. So Paul is saying this, bring your bodies and yield them to God. No longer take them back to use them to fulfill your own will and your own desires. But as you have presented it, as you have brought it to be under the disposal of God, allow God to carry out whatever he wants through your body. Yield your body to God. Allow him to use it as he wants. The second meaning of the word to present is this. To bring your body into fellowship with God. The body is the organ by which the heart and the mind reveals itself, manifests itself. God always wants a fellowship that begins from the heart, from the mind. And that fellowship can only be manifested through the body. And now God wants our body as the organ by which that fellowship can be made manifest. He wants my knees to be able to bow down before him. He wants my eyes to be able to bring out tears that are able to satisfy him. He wants my hands to be lifted up before him in worship, in surrender. He wants my entire body to be in a fellowship with him. Because God has manifested his mercy. 
His mercies are no longer hidden from us. His mercies has been revealed. The scripture says he has remembered his mercies of the old. He has revealed his salvation to the Gentiles. God has revealed his salvation to us. His mercies are, no, are now open. He has been touched by the feeling of our infirmity. The scripture says, we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. Christ Jesus, he can't be touched. He is the image of the invisible God. So if Christ being the high priest can be touched, then God also was touched by the feelings of our pains and our sufferings. And he has revealed his mercy. He has manifested his mercy. And because he has manifested his mercy, now the scriptures lays upon us a responsibility to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. God has revealed his mercies. He has exhibited them. He has manifested his mercies. These are the ways that Paul told the Romans of how God has manifested his mercies. I'm going to share them with you. The first one of them is this. He has made us to be vessels of mercy. In the book of Romans chapter number 9. Romans chapter number 9. Romans chapter number 9. Verses number 22 to 23. The scriptures divide the human beings into two categories. Vessels of wrath and vessels of mercy. The vessels of wrath, these are the ones that God will show his power to destroy. God will reveal through them his anger. And the vessels of mercy, God will reveal through them his mercy. God has made them to be recipients of mercy. God has made us to be recipients of mercy. God wants to reveal his mercy to people. The way he reveals his mercy, he reveals his wrath in the verses of wrath is the way God wants to reveal his mercy through us. So that the world, when they look at us, they will see the mercy of God in operation. They will see the results of the mercies of God. God has made us to be vessels of mercy. The scripture says in the book of Romans chapter 9 verses 18. Therefore he has mercy on whom he wills. God willed us to be vessels of mercy. He showed us mercy. My brother, my sister, God has made you to be a vessel of mercy. God has chosen to reveal his mercy to the world through you. God has chosen you to be something by which that people can relate the mercies of God through. God has demonstrated his mercy through you. The second manifestation of the mercy of God is this. He did not make any distinction between the Jew and the Greek when he was manifesting his mercy. God never categorized people when he was revealing his mercy through Jesus Christ. The book of Acts chapter number 10 verses 34. The scripture says that Peter said that of truth I have believed that God shows no favoritism. God never showed any partiality. He never discriminated. When he was showing us mercy, he never discriminated us. He never said, this one is the son of my servant. Let me show him greater mercy than the one I'm revealing to the son of a drunkard. The way he reveals mercy to a child born in marriage is the way he reveals mercy to one born out of wedlock. The way he, re he reveals his mercy to a child who has been accepted by parents is the way he reveals mercy to a child rejected by parents. The way he reveals mercy to one who is a sinner is the same way he reveals mercy to one who thinks he's still religious and he thinks he's morally upright. The way he reveals mercy to a drunkard is the way he reveals mercy to one who is not a drunkard. The way he reveals mercy to a father who can take care of his family is the the same way he reveals mercy to a father and a mother who have neglected their families. God shows mercy equally. He does not discriminate. The book of Romans chapter number 11 verses 32. 
the scripture says for god has committed them all to disobedience that he might have mercy on all god committed all of us to disobedience so that he may have mercy on all of us he made the basis of him having mercy to be equal he subjected everyone to disobedience god never discriminated anyone he never showed racism or favoritism he showed equal mercy to everyone the third manifestation of his mercy is this he was found of us when we were never seeking him my brother my sister at first god was never found of you because you were seeking him he was found of you before you sought him before you called his name he was already there saying here i am before you knew him he already revealed himself to you as a savior god was found of us when we were never seeking him the book of romans chapter number 10 verses 20 the scripture says but isaiah is very bold and says i was found by those who did not seek me i was made manifest to those who did not ask of me god demonstrated his mercy towards you when you are never seeking him he made himself manifest when you are never asking for him god chose to make himself manifest to you the moment you are receiving salvation you did not receive it because you called upon god you received salvation because god was already willing to save you god was already working in you giving you the desire to call upon him giving you the faith to call the faith to believe in him because the scripture says faith comes by hearing the word of god so god gave his word so that you may have faith upon him by the time you are calling upon him god had touched your heart he had given you a broken heart that could break before him in tears he had removed a heart of stone he was found of you when you had not yet sought after him by you calling upon his name show that god had already touched your heart and made you to see his love the fourth way that god has shown his mercy is this he has grafted us into christ contrary to nature romans chapter number 11 verses 24 the scripture says for if you are cut out of the olive tree which is wild by nature and you are grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree consider the mercies of god he did something that was contrary to nature he did what i call a miracle of mercy in the palestine land in those times and in the roman world in those times they knew how to do grafting and they used to graft olive trees they would take a branch of a cultivated olive tree and then go and graft it into a stem of a wild tree they could not take a branch of a wild tree and graft it into a cultivated olive tree this is because the wild olive tree had poison in its branches so it could not be cultivated it could not be grafted into a cultivated olive tree and produce fruits that could be partaken of and god does something that was contrary he does something that human beings never were doing he took us who are wild by nature those ones who deserve to be cut and to be burnt he took us he did cut us he never allowed us to dry off he never subjected us to fire he took us and grafted us into a cultivated olive tree the cultivated olive tree is the israelite family is the stock of abraham god took us 
who we were wild by nature, people who were foreigners and strangers to the covenants. We were never partakers of the covenants. We were strangers. We were out of the commonwealth of Israel. We could never be numbered as Jews. God has grafted us. He has adopted us into the family of Israel. We are now partakers of the same masses as Israelites. We have been made to partake of the blessings of Abraham. As God had told Abraham when he was making the covenant with him, through you all the nations of the world shall be blessed. We have been blessed because through Christ we have been grafted into the stock of Abraham so that we may produce the oil that is no longer poisonous but that is acceptable. My brother and my sister, God has revealed his mercy. He has manifested his mercy. You are no longer a stranger to the mercies of God. You are no longer a foreigner to these masses. He has revealed them to you. He has allowed you to have a knowledge of them. He has manifested his masses unto you. Now the scripture says, because God has manifested his masses, because he has revealed his masses to you, because he has made you to be partakers of these masses. Now this one is your reasonable service. This one is your logical service. This one is your rational service. This is the service that now you can offer back to God, taking your bodies as a living sacrifice, surrendering it to God, no longer using your body for your own desire, no longer using your body for your own will, no longer using your body for whatever thing you want, but allowing God to use your body as a sacrifice, allowing God to use your body the way that he desires. My brother, my sister, are you yielding your body as a living sacrifice? Perhaps you're saying, I have not yet received Jesus Christ. Receive Jesus because he has been given by mercy. You cannot, you cannot know the mercies of God unless you receive Jesus Christ. You cannot think of these masses and offer your bodies as a living sacrifice without you receiving Jesus Christ. Receive him as Lord and as Savior. He is the merciful high priest, a high priest who is full of mercy, a high priest who is always revealing his mercy towards us. Receive Jesus into your life so that you may know these masses by experience. The scripture says, Test and see that the Lord is good. Test him by receiving Jesus Christ, who is the demonstration of the mercy of God towards us. God has revealed his mercy. Now it is upon you to offer your body as a living sacrifice. For even that body is a manifestation of the mercy of God. You never deserved to have it. You are no longer, you are not worthy of having that body. You have it because of the mercy of God. Now, because of that mercy, not because you are worthy to be a living sacrifice, because of even that mercy that qualifies you to be a sacrifice, offer you a body which was not worthy to be a sacrifice, but now mercy qualifies it to be a sacrifice. God bless you as you offer your body as a living sacrifice in the view of the masses that God has shown you. Amen.